on uh, species life traits and how we were trying to uh, share it and make it accessible following the FAIR principles. And I make this presentation on behalf of the whole team of people who are working on this project uh, across several French institutions. And uh, now it's actually European institutions because GB Spain kindly came to our rescue. <laughs> So this presentation is uh, named Knowledge Based on Species Life Traits, a Spanish-French pre core implementation use case. So a bit of a uh, plan for, uh, sorry, <laughs> first and foremost. Uh, so I'll talk a bit about context, um, so uh, about the Species Traits Knowledge Base and its uh, uh, linked working group. <laughs> and what are uh, its needs in terms of tools and standards. Uh, then I focus on the Prinian core, its definition and history, and how it interacts with other trade standards. And then I finish with our uh, joint CSP project, which is a GBIF-funded uh, project uh, for capacity enhancement uh, that just began and is uh, uh, supposed to uh, finish uh, next year. And then I uh, give some perspectives on our, the work to, uh, to come and uh, what is ahead of us. And if you want to uh, access our abstract for this conference, you can either follow the, the link at the bottom of the slide or scan the QR code. So the knowledge base, knowledge base sorry, that I abbreviated as a KB in the next slides, uh, was created a few years ago by the species knowledge team within the patronage department that I talked about in my introduction. Uh, it's uh, said to be a national reference database for all ecological species traits and interactions. Uh, it's not necessarily focused on descriptive traits uh, because these traits are already managed, managed sorry, by softwares like XPair that uh, Regine uh, talked about and uh, I think Adeline will also present uh, the software more in, in detail. Uh, so you can access the knowledge base webpage uh, following the, the links on the, the slides, uh, as well as a list of descriptors. And right now it's uh, not fully accessible. It's, uh, it's been, uh, it's still in development. So we're trying to uh, make it available uh, following the FAIR principles, but uh, right now it's not really FAIR. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're, we're trying to, uh, to share it uh, following the FAIR principles. Uh, so, um, currently there are more than uh, 58,000 interactions described, including uh, almost 900 pollinator plants and uh, interactions. And I'm focusing on pollinators uh, plant interactions because it's a special focus on our uh, project. Uh, we wanted to restrict the scope a bit, so we, we chose the, the pollinators uh, thematic. And uh, around 77 uh, Thousand traits are already in the knowledge base, uh, including more than uh, 700,000 uh, traits on flora visiting species. So these uh, figures show the amount of biological interactions on the left and uh, the amount of species traits on the left, on the right, sorry, <laughs> included in the knowledge base over time. And it's still growing, so we are really in need of uh, standards to manage it and to share it uh, uh, with the uh, following the uh, open data principles. Uh, so in order to do that, we created uh, three years ago now um, a working group uh, around this uh, trait knowledge database. So it was first um, uh, constituted uh, only of uh, uh, people from the uh, Patrinat and other uh, Museum of uh, Natural History uh, um, research and technical, technical teams. But then we um, uh, expanded it a bit with the people from other institutions, such as uh, INRIA and U uh, University of Nice in France. And uh, later, we also had people from the uh, research group uh, Polyneco, which is a research groups on, uh, group on pollinators uh, that joined the, the working group, uh, as well as the Spanish team uh, that helped us with the standardization of the base. Uh, the discussion were uh, focused on ontologies and standards in uh, uh, order to uh, better manage and share uh, trade information. So at first, we uh, really looked at uh, all existing standards and ontologies to see what was 
uh, available and what was best fit for our needs. So we looked at the ETS, Ecological Trade Standard, uh, Darwin Core, uh, because it had uh, extension such as Trade Descriptor, uh, Plinian Core, and uh, other existing Thedorus and ontologies, including uh, Lothair, which is a French Thedorus uh, focused on biodiversity terms. And uh, as I already said, we decided to focus on plant pollinator interaction. And sorry, it's a bit hidden on the slide, but uh, I already uh, said it. Uh, it's a priority topic at the national and European level. So we decided to focus our efforts on this uh, thematic group. And uh, sorry. As I said, we uh, examined several standards, and uh, in the end, it was Plinian Core that was uh, looking uh, really uh, great uh, and was meeting most of our needs. So we chose to uh, ask more about this standard, uh, and we were answered uh, by Paco Pando and his team, uh, who uh, developed the, the Plinian Core. So if you recognize this slide, it's because I shamelessly borrowed them from <laughs> last year's Tadwick presentation that was made by uh, Paco. Uh, and But I had this authorization. <laughs> so I will just uh, uh, say a bit about the Plinian Core. So its definition is that it's a data specification that can be used to describe different aspects of biological species information. And this means uh, all kinds of properties, uh, especially bio uh, biological and non-biological uh, traits. Uh, the, so the, everything, are, uh, all traits are uh, within the, its scopes. And uh, what is really interesting for us, for the knowledge base that we are trying to, to share following the fair, the fair principles, is that uh, this standards uh, also uh, includes um, terms that cover legal aspects, conservation, management, demography, nomenclature, and all kinds of related resources, uh, the taxon related resources. So it's a, it's a great, it looks like a great tool to, uh, to manage and share a, a, a taxon trade database. So we are uh, really uh, hopeful that it, uh, it uh, will be a successful, successful use case of pin and core implementation. So I won't uh, read all the history of Plinian Core, but uh, just to let you know, uh, so the standard was uh, created, uh, I mean, uh, first talked about in 2004, and then uh, it was um, uh, implemented and uh, um, completed uh, um, uh, along the year. And it's supposed to be submitted at Tadwick uh, this year or maybe early uh, next year, so uh, we, we, you can, uh, ask the Tadwick uh, standard group or uh, Francisco Pando, who is in the room, <laughs> uh, for more information if uh, if needed. I'm just looking at the time because I'm the timekeeper for this session, so I'm trying to keep my own time. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Plinian Core exists within a universe of uh, standards. So, you can see it's, uh, over, it overlaps with uh, other standards such as Delta or SDD that uh, Regine talked about in her uh, introduction presentation. Uh, and as I said, uh, it also has its own characteristics and uh, such as the natural history uh, uh, related terms, uh, invasiveness, um, and also covers uses, management, conservation, demography and threats, and habitat terms that are really useful for what we want to do. So that's why we, uh, we had the idea to uh, propose a CSP project around Plinian Core and Pollinator Straits. So we first had the idea uh, of this CSP project, which uh, just as a reminder is the Capacity Enhancement Support Program from JBIF. Uh, so it funds a project that uh, for a year between two JBIF nodes or more, but this year it's only two JBIF nodes. Um, and uh, we had the, this idea of a joint CSP project with the, the Spanish team uh, at Tadwick 2022 in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. So that uh, also shows the, the great uh, uh, interest of Tadwick in terms of uh, networking and uh, joint ideas around a BR2. <laughs> uh, so that's why we invited uh, Francisco Pando to uh, uh, introduce Prinian Core to the working trade. Uh, to the trade working group, sorry, <laughs> uh, in early 2033 in the, this year. 
And uh, he uh, showed us the implemented use case in Spain, which is the species page on the Spanish Ministry for Ecological Transition uh, that uses uh, that already uses Spring and Core. And the project proposal was approved by the members of the Trades Working Group. And we uh, proposed to uh, apply Plinian Core to the trades uh, knowledge base uh, with support from JBF Spain and to focus on pollinators. And we uh, will organize two uh, workshops during the duration of this project in order to enrich uh, our national referential uh, checklist that is uh, TaxRef and its uh, web equi equivalent TaxRef web. Um, and we will also produce technical doc documentation. So once again, to follow the FAIR principles and make the data and metadata more accessible and understandable by future, future users and uh, partners. And our CSP pro uh, project proposal uh, got approved uh, by JBIF this summer. So it's uh, really recent and it just began this, uh, this uh, autumn. So our perspectives are to work on uh, other topics uh, and or taxon groups once we are finished with pollinators. Uh, try to improve nested and descriptive traits because uh, nested traits are uh, a bit of a challenge. So we have to maybe see if we have time what we can do with that. Uh, descriptive, descriptive traits are, uh, as I said, uh, already managed by other softwares, but we will see how it can uh, make links or maybe integrate them into the knowledge base. Uh, we will see how uh, Plinian Core meets the needs of ontologies in the knowledge base too. And once it is shared and uh, deployed, uh, how we can enforce policy actions on the knowledge base. And of course, we will take into account user feedback and try to uh, improve the knowledge base and its documentation as it goes. So uh, in the, just to end my presentation, I would like to um, thank uh, all our partners, especially the French Trades Working Group and its partners, and uh, especially the species knowledge team in the Patronat department. Uh, of course, the JBF Spain team, which is uh, already helping us greatly with this project, and the JBF and CSP programs uh, teams uh, for funding this project. And uh, hopefully we will uh, be there next year to pr present the conclusions uh, of our project. And uh, just if you, uh, some of you or are or no colleagues that are working with the trades database, uh, don't hesitate to come talk, talking to me or to our partners. And we, we are always uh, uh, happy to talk about that and uh, have some feedback and uh, see how we can improve our, our work and uh, without reinventing the way. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sophie. Is there some question online? No, in the room? No. So I think we will be to the next talk. It's a video.